Hello everyone, welcome to our very first episode of The Pitch with Fox, B. Doms, and Mitch. I'm your host, John Fox. To the left, I have Brian Dongs here. Hey and to the right, Mitch Sabatelli. Now, what we do here at The Pitch is we take all your questions uh, that you have, we answer it as best as we can, and we analyze and break down everything in the sports world. Now, um, as everybody knows, for, for the first topic of the show, uh, as you all know, um, the MLB playoffs are inching nearer and you know closer and closer. So, um, you guys, what 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 do you think uh, is a good World Series prediction? What two teams do you think will be there? Uh, well, I said from the beginning of the season, I said it's going to be Braves Rangers. I'm sticking with those picks. I like I like the Rangers at the start of the season. Cliff Lee was a huge acquisition, probably the biggest acquisition in the last three years at least. The the Rangers have always needed a bona fide ace. Cliff Lee is that bona fide ace. I think they're going to cruise past the Rays, who are, are a pretty good, are a really good team, especially come playoff time. But I think with Cliff Lee, two two games in, ser in that series, that's going to be great. I like the Braves on the other side. The the Braves are going to be playing. I think the Reds the Reds are really good. They, I mean, they, they've had they, they've been, gotten a little lucky this this year. I think the Reds' rotation is really is really weak though. Having anyone with Johnny Cueto at the beginning is is just um, weak. I think the Bra the Braves' rotation with Tim Hudson. And um, Jair Jurgens, Tommy Hansen, that's pretty solid. I like the, the Rangers, Braves. Who do you think is going to win? I'm going with the Rangers in a sweep. Cliff Lee. Bold prediction. Cliff Lee, three games in that series, that's going to be tough. I don't think any NL team can hit Cliff Lee. Good you point. See, you've seen him last, last season with the good, Phillies. Good point. Speaking of the Phillies, I'm actually taking the Phillies and the Yankees to win, you know, make it to the World Series. I think the Yankees obviously have probably the best lineup in baseball. I don't think anyone would argue that. They, they have a good core. No. The starting pitching is solid, but I think what's going to kill them is their bullpen. And I think that's where the Phillies are going to beat them at seven. The Phillies have four great stars, yes. and their bullpen is a lot more solid than the Yankees, and their hitting can match up with the Yankees. So, what, do you, what do you think about their um, the back end of their rotation? You know, CC's a stud. But, you know, Phil Hughes was solid at the beginning, but Phil Hughes, Pettit, and um, Nova, the guy they brought up, they're all kind of, they're, they're not having a very good September, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think they can turn that around, but they, they might not, and that's the biggest question mark. I don't have any doubts that the Yankees can make it to the World Series, but I don't think they're going to win. And what's your pick between the Yankees and Phillies? Phillies, all the way. Yeah, I, think, I think the Phillies rotation is just going to be the key right there. Uh, Oswald, Hamill, Hamels, and uh, Doc. Halliday. That's I pretty mean, serious. Halliday and Oswald at the top two. That so you're picking the Phillies and how many? Seven. 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 I think it's going to be a, cl a close series, but the Yankees won't pull it up. And I'm a Yankees fan, so... Bold prediction, bold prediction. Now, uh, next topic, very brief. Every season, there's a team, you know, that's good enough to make the playoffs, but doesn't, unfortunately, because of the division. Now, uh, this, this is the case with the Boston Red Sox. Now, do you, do you feel if they were in a, a different division that it, that it would be fair that they'd be in it right now? I think they should be in it. I mean, I hate this whole, you know, the top team of the division makes it and then the wild card team. I mean, if, if the Red Sox were in the NL West, they'd be up by, like, 40 games. they just destroy every team. I mean, uh, it's not fair to them. All right, well, well it sucks because I'm a Red Sox fan. But, you know, the baseball is big on divisions. The baseball is really rich in rivalries. I think, I mean, you play the division. They give you a wild card. If you don't win your division, you still have a chance. You know, it's, it just so happens we play in a uh, division with the three best teams in baseball. I think it's really tough. I do like what the NFL does, though, with two wild cards. I think that's really good. Um, I think, but right now, I mean, it just comes and goes. The uh, Rays and Yankees are pretty good. I think next year, the Red Sox make some offseason moves. They're back in it. But how great would this be, having the Red Sox, Yankees, and Rays all in the same playoffs? Oh, it would be great. But what about the teams out west? You know, they, they don't get to see any of their teams. True, but maybe they have to add another wild cards team or something. I, I like that. If they, if they could find out a way to maybe get two wild cards, I think that would be really good. Yeah, I mean, you look at hockey, you know, it's the top eight hockey's, teams. Yeah, hockey, hockey's great. It's the top eight teams. It doesn't matter where they play. And same, with basketball, basketball. same with basketball. I think basketball. football has the greatest playoffs, though. Two, True. Two, two wild cards, I think that, that gives everybody a chance. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, I think the Red Sox were bombarded with injuries, so... Yeah, There's really nothing they can do other than that. You know. Yeah, it's true. I mean, they played the, they played their best. I mean, they put up a fight. You know, John I mean, Lackey disappointed, all, but all their best players are on the DL. I mean, yeah. 
I mean, the Rangers, the, the, the Rays and Yankees, so far in the regular season, they were just dominating, you know, back and forth. I mean, if you think about it, if they weren't even playing in the same division, they could be even better, because they had to face each other, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know, it's tough. All right, well, uh, who's your pick for uh, Cy Young Award winner in each league? All right, well, I'll start out in the, um, in the NL. I think Doc Halliday is, uh, was a great pickup. You know, I, I was talking about Lee earlier in the show. Trading Lee, that was, that, was, that was tough. But, I mean, Doc Halliday, 21 wins. I mean, he, he's sub-3 ERA. Uh, I think he's just the anchor of that rotation. Nine complete games, that's ridiculous. I'm going to go in the, a in the AL, that's much tougher. You know, you got a lot, you got a lot of uh, picks there. You got CeCe, John Lester, Felix Hernandez. But I'm going to go David Price. I think that he's um, shown people this year uh, who was down him earlier. I like David Price. Um, this, this year he's a bona fide ace, and he's really anchored that rotation. I like your Doc Halliday pick. That's, who, that's probably my pick to win it. Yeah, but another person to keep in mind is Adam Wainwright. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's, 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 twenty and eleven, two forty two, two hundred plus strikeouts. I think he had like two fifteen. Yeah, he was, I mean, he has about he had about that last week. So. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, he's right up there with Halliday. I think Halliday is going to win it, but it's going to be a closer matchup than everyone thinks. In the AL, Halliday is a lot though. I mean, this is yeah. what is it? It's number three, four. Yeah, in the AL, I'm going to go with Felix Hernandez. The reason I'm making this pick is because last year Zach Greinke won it, and he only had 16 wins. True. He had very few wins compared to a lot of other pitchers. True. So that's kind of reshaped the whole Cy Young award. True. And I mean, you can't beat 227 and 230 strikeouts. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I think the wins are in consideration. I think it's because you know CC and David Price have so many wins. I think that might change it. Yeah. Last season was different because there wasn't anybody else who really contend with them. Zachary is clearly the most I mean, dominating. I don't. I don't think. Last year. I don't think Felix is going to win. But if I was voting, that's who I'd vote for. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. I think I'd vote for David Price. I think I'm going to go with a prediction. I want David Price to win. I think he should win. Uh, I think the I think the people are going to take CC though, just because yeah. He's, you you I mean, can't forget about John Lester though too. I mean, he's had a phenomenal year. Too. John, yeah, he would have. But last this game yesterday just blew himself up. Four innings, yeah. eight runs that killed him. He's, he, if he went for twenty wins, but it's also a game that doesn't matter. But also, if you're going to give Lester the the thing, you should give Felix Hernandez the thing because it's the same thing. They're both not going to make the playoffs. If they um, make well, the playoffs, Zach Greinke, huge. Zach Greinke was not even close to the playoffs anymore. Exactly, but like I said, I mean, he had no other competition. Yeah, true. Well, King Felix. Yeah, Felix. King Felix is just in an unfortunate position. He has a team that couldn't, you know, back Team's him up with runs. But they, they were supposed to be great. He, he had an under three ERA, so, and he has, he has he's thirteen and twelve. That's ridiculous, in my opinion. Any team with Felix Hernandez and Cliff Lee at the start of the team at, at the start of the season. Should have gotten much better. If 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 if, yeah. last in the if if King if King Felix was on the Yankees, he'd have over twenty wins. Oh yeah, no doubt. He probably have twenty five. He, he's he's better he's than completely dominating. Sabathia. Dominating. He's gets the ball up there at ninety seven. He's a really dominating pitcher. With nasty stuff. Yeah. All right. So um, on the contrary to that, uh, well, along the same lines, uh, who do you think is going to win the uh, MVP in each league? All right. I'll go with what Mitch did. And I'll start in the NL. I'm going to go with Carlos Gonzalez from Colorado. I mean, nobody saw this kid coming. I mean, you know, what was it, 338, 35 homers, 120 RBIs, uh, 25 stolen bases, like 10 steals. Certainly like a key 10, factor. Uh, 10 triples. Yeah. He, I mean, he's yeah. been a triple crown contender for the whole season. Yeah. Him with Vaughn. Definitely a breakout Definitely a breakout contender. Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of faith in him. And who do you like in the AL? In the AL, it, it was really tough, but I think I'm going to go with Miguel Cabrera. Uh, I, I did not expect him to bat around 330. The home runs, I expected to be there, you know, 35, 40 home runs, the RBIs, but I never expected him to hit that. I high. completely disagree with you. Most valuable player of course. should be most valuable player. If you're if you're a most valuable player and your team doesn't make the playoffs, then you can't be that much valuable to your team. You, you could, you're a really good player for your team, but I think a most valuable player should at least get your team to the playoffs if they're so valuable. I'm looking at Joey Votto in the NL. The team, the team, this team sucked. Coming into the season, nobody gave them a chance. Everyone thought they were going to be last in the division. Joey Votto has led that team all the way to where they are right now. They won the Central. They beat up the Cards with that great line of Pools and Holiday. They beat up the Cubs, who everybody wants to win. Um, I think Votto's just leading them, leading them to uh, contention. I, like I said, I think the Reds are going to fall short, but I mean, it's been a great run. I like Votto hitting 
323, 37 RBIs, 111 RBIs. That's triple crown worthy right there. And the, in the September is one of been is one one of his best months. I really like Joey Votto. I gotta say, you really can't go wrong with Gonzalez or Votto. I mean, they're, they're, Votto is good, but I mean, the team's not gonna make the playoffs. So I mean, yeah, he's but, definitely the most valuable player to his team, but most valuable player in the whole league. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, he is a triple crown contender. I mean, he was trying for up until a couple weeks ago. Sure. I mean, in the in the AL, I'm going to go back to the Rangers. I love Josh Hamilton. Josh Hamilton had a down year last year after having a great year before. Uh, this year, he's hitting a 361. That's incredible. It'd be a power hitter in the middle of the lineup. 361 with um, 97 RBIs. That's inc that's incredible in that lineup. That lineup's great. Jo Josh Hamilton's definitely the anchor in that lineup. I really like what um, Hamilton's done for that team. And um, like I said, with Hamilton and Lee, that team could go far. I have one more point I want to make, too. Carlos Gonzalez did miss 22 games. True. That is true. So, I mean, if he had played in those games, don't you think they would have probably been in the playoffs? Um, true, but you can also say uh, Josh Hamilton missed 15 games. So, I mean... Oh, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with Josh Hamilton. That's but also, the, the team's weak. So, I mean, the, the, the division's weak. I mean, if he misses a couple games, they sh if, they're, if they're that good... They should, I mean, they should get in there. He would have had easily 40 home runs with a 340 batting average. That's yes. incredible. I, I really like Cargo. Next year, I mean, if you're if you're a fantasy team, I mean, Cargo's right up there. Uh, next year, I'm looking for the Rockies. If they make some offseason moves, I like them. Best pickup I've ever made. Good for you. <laughs> All right, now, moving on to the next topic. Uh, week four of the NFL is, you know, finally here. And, you know, with the bye weeks coming up, the the Cowboys and Vikings have a have a lot to you know get themselves pick themselves up gather all the pieces. Now, do you think they'll do you think they'll be playoff teams with the way with the way they're playing right now? Just well, the Vikings they definitely got better. They needed a win before their bye week, and they got one. Um, I think Favre's definitely shown his age. I think he's definitely having having a worse year than he had last year. I think the major the major blow for that team is Cindy Rice. As soon as they can get him back. And have a, a guy in there, um, a wideout on the outside for Favre to open the ball, uh, the backfield for Adrian Peterson. They're going to be a really good team. With that defense and that line, Allen, Edwards, and the two Williams in the middle, I mean, you can't beat that. Um, but right now, I mean, they're just going through a rough patch. You know, everybody wanted, everyone thought they were going to be Super Bowl contenders. I think um, with, without City Rice, that really made a blow. I think they should have gotten Vincent Jackson. I mean, Vincent Jackson was out there. They made a few, they made a few offers for him. They didn't pull any triggers. Um, that that was serious. I mean, um, but going to the Cowboys, yeah. I mean, th their division's really tough. So it, I mean, they're they're. If I had to go, I'd say the Vikings make the playoffs over the um, over Dallas. Um, Dallas is supposed to be America's favorite team. Everybody wants Dallas. Um, I don't want Dallas to make it, but um, Dallas is America's favorite team. Tony Romo, Miles Austin. That's a really good pair right there. They're a great running game. Felix Jones and Marion Barber, solid defense. But I mean, I, I mean, they're definitely going to do better than one and two. I'll give them a ten and six record, but I don't know if they're going to make it. I think the Cowboys, they have the talent to make it, but the coaching staff is not getting. Wade done. Phillips might be the worst coach in the NFL. I, that's yeah. Jason I mean, Garrett, their offensive coordinator, should have that job. Now, if if you look at what they did the first two weeks, it was almost nothing but throwing the ball. They did exactly. not run the ball at all. They have a really good backfield. One, two, yeah. punch. Felix they, Jones and Mary Martin. Last week, they started running the ball, and they're going to win. They need to continue running the ball. I think Felix should be much better at running the ball. And then with that, with the, uh, Dez Bryant, Miles Austin, Roy Williams, Jason Witten, are you kidding me? You can, you can always rely on Miles Austin. I mean, yeah. as, as we've but seen, he, he, he continues to... Well, last week, he didn't do too much. No. But the, the, the key is, is if they run the ball, they're going to win. And the coaching staff has to get that through their heads. And it'll be interesting to see what they do for the rest of the season. Yeah. For the Vikings, I picked them to be in the Super Bowl before the season started. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but I do still think they're going to make the playoffs. Their team is just too talented, and with Sidney Rice, when he comes back, I mean, they could win six out of those eight games. Oh, definitely. Sidney Rice is a really good wide receiver. And I, 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 even, I would put him in the top ten receivers in the league. I didn't even notice that, uh, how much of a glare, a major glare it is until he went down. Um, Sidney Rice had a breakout season last year. Without Sidney Rice, I mean, the Vikings are really, really not doing good. They have to rely on Shank, Vicente Shanko. 
Um, he had a couple good games, but I mean, if you double cover Shank, he he can't do anything. So 